We'll start the meeting. This is the uh, May 11th meeting of the Conway Select Board. It's about 610. Uh, first item on the agenda, and it's for the May 4th meeting. Uh, Phil, Bob, have you looked at these? Yeah, they look great. Okay, Phil. Yes, I concur. Okay, fine. You're coming in a little faint there, Phil. A little faint, okay. All right. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the May 4th meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. All right, three ayes, unanimous. We have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $64,049, a payroll warrant of $118,008, and a payroll deduction warrant of $28,693. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. Um, all in favor? Philip? Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't had a chance to examine them yet, but um, based on recent history, I anticipate being in favor. So provisionally, yes. <laughs> Philip, are you in favor? Yes. yes. Okay. Robert? Sure. Uh, Tom, I appreciated all of the data. I mean, this was like order of magnitude, more data than usual. Yeah. All right. And I'm a yes. That's a unanimous all right, meetings attended by select board members? Yeah, many. Um, let me just get my calendar up. So, yeah, the, the um, Wednesday the 6th was. Um, the first in a series of Frontier Budget Committee meetings um, lasting uh, up. We had another one today. Um, and it was also a, the day, I think uh, the, that day, Tom emailed me for an update on the Union 38 contract negotiations and nothing much had happened forever. But then but within a couple of hours, hand. much was happening. So I don't know whether Tom had was clued into something, but um, that resulted in um, meetings throughout the week, including a Union 38 negotiating team meeting um, just over the past couple of hours that just got to hang up from and start this. Um, also this morning, I was um, uh, listening to the meeting along with Carl and with, uh, with Tom Hutchinson, the, um, I don't even, the, the Frontier EDS group, um, which, which was also um, interesting. It's always interesting to listen to the Deerfield Chiefs update. I thought, I thought the one thing that, that um, you know, I, I guess the chief was trying to get people to pass along the thing that he doesn't want, you, you don't want um, your residents driving around in their cars with windows up and, their ma and masks on, that there's been motorists reporting being lightheaded and um, that it's a public safety issue because people aren't getting enough oxygen and it's a health issue. So to remind, residents that you don't need to wear masks inside your your own personal vehicle while you're driving around town because i certainly have seen enough people doing that but it's bad for your health so so i think that people would already know that um apparently not otherwise i guess these things wouldn't be happening so and so that was i i um yeah and uh yeah, okay. That's about that's about it. Okay. Robert? No, I had no meetings, although um, <laughs> due to that phone call that, that Phil's talking about, I got an, an email from the Deerfield Select Board to some extent asking us if we're interested in uh, face shields, per, you know, especially for while we're voting. And it's I think meeting. I asked you guys a picture of that. I don't really know how those things work exactly, but like they look like they might fit into a special hat or something. I don't know, but there's a band. There's a band that you yeah. Put a on your a head. student at Deer at Deerfield Academy is making them with his um, his three D printer. So I I wrote to them and asked them what the deal is. 
So, so, so Bob, part of that, what, what was the reason you got that email is because the chief um, has is in physical possession of, um, I don't want to say a large quantity of, of PPE, but um, certainly enough for our town's purposes for both the election and um, for town meeting, because it's the same sort of issue. You have people sitting behind tables going through books as residents go up and sign in a book and, and you know, all that. So you, you need all that stuff. And for all the people that are going to be needed to uh, assist people in setting up their lawn chairs in a safe manner and safe distance and all that stuff. That's everything that's related to that. But um, so we are going to need a supply. And I thought that it would be a good idea to take the chief up, the Deerfield chief up on his kind offer to share the supplies that he has accumulated with our town. Um, I, 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 you know, I, that just took place this morning. Couldn't go on the agenda. I was still going to wait for later on. Great. Oh, well, we can talk about it then. Yeah, but because um, it definitely put this on the not, you know, not reasonably foreseen twenty four hours in advance kind of a thing. Great. Um, you know, he he, he has uh, just all the stuff. So. Yeah, just so you know, I already asked for some and got some. Um, he was he was very very quick that way, and and I've. Uh, I've given, these are uh, surgical masks. And I know the Board of Health was looking for them for the transfer station. Uh, so I gave them some and um, also the, uh, the town clerk for um, elections and, uh, and town meeting. All right, I had, uh... I had a meeting with the, the three chairs of the select boards from Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. Uh, I wanted to get together with them just to, to talk about what happens with the school budgets, how things are going with that, and get their sentiment on some sort of a, a concerted effort as we move forward to try to find out how we're going to deal with school I also had a meeting with, uh, listened to a webinar for the MMA, obviously with the Lieutenant Governor and uh, a couple of our key officials uh, to talk about what the latest uh, happenings are with not only the, uh, the health situation, but also the budget situation. And again, we're, we're still in the dark um, because we don't know where things are yet. And maybe we'll get a little more information as we get closer to um, to town meeting. Curly Baker had a long press conference today talking about the state of Corona in Massachusetts. And, and, and I thought it was excellent. Even though I'm not a Republican, I really thought he did a good job. Well, it doesn't make any difference whether you're Republican or not. Well, it you know, matters he, to me. He's, he's, been doing, he's been doing a fair job, <laughs> you know. Uh, he came out with his plan for um, for reopening today. Right. So you know that's on that's on the state website. So you can take a look at that. He even talked about an ice cream uh, shop that's about two miles down the road from me, down oh. here on the Cape that tried to okay. reopen a couple days ago. No, no wonder it was so relevant to you, Bob. It was. You know. All right. Uh, that was all I had. All right, public comments. Do we have any public comments? Well, I have something. I don't know if you want me to wait till the forest stewardship part, but I do have some comments on the um, the survey. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait till we get to that, Priscilla. Um, yeah, um, just to let you know, um, they uh, the the consultants do not have an update for us. Um, uh, any any anything substantial since since last week, so there won't be anything from this end on that. But Tom, the survey is on the town website now. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, next item: uh, vote to pay the registry fees for the mortgage release from the um, Guilford Fund. Anybody have any discussion on that? If not, I'll make a motion that we do that. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. All right. We got three ayes. 
Next item is to sign the loan paperwork for the highway maintenance building with the Greenfield Cooperative Bank. Is the paperwork in the office ready to sign? Uh, that'll be in the office uh, by nine o'clock tomorrow morning. It needs to be notarized. Uh, so Phil and, and John, if you can come in and sign that sometime before one, when Lori leaves, that would be great. Okay, great. I'll be there nine-ish. Uh, everybody knows we got a really great interest rate from them on that. Really wonderful. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, beautiful. All right, next item is the forest. Uh, I, 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 was, there a, was there a vote on that? Um, yeah, all right. I'll make a motion that we sign the, the loan paperwork for the highway maintenance building with the Greenfield Cooperative Bank. Do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Yes. All right. Tom, when you sent that out and you said you got the loan from the Greenfield Co-op, I thought you meant the... The, the food store in Greenfield. Me too. <laughs> I went, whoa, they're in, they're in the loan business now. <laughs> okay. More than one co-op in Greenfield. <laughs> All right, the Forest Stewardship Plan Development presentation with Alex and Mary. We don't have that because there hasn't been much done on that. All right, uh, Priscilla, you have some comments? Yeah, so I didn't get to see the uh, survey until later last week after you had it, you know, that Monday at your meeting. So I, I just want to say I have some concerns in that um, there are some areas that are not addressed in the survey, um, some definitions that aren't present, and, um, you know, the areas of questions I have concerns about. They have, talk have, about you, have you contacted Mary on that at all? Uh, no, I have not. I, I will, but um, the survey's out, it looks like. Well, um, yeah, as of last week's meeting, we all went over the survey. There were comments made. There were a couple of additions made. But certainly, um, do, you have, do you have Mary's contact information, Priscilla? I do. It's at the end of that survey. Okay. But All right. Then please get with her and make any suggestions you have for a you know, changes or additions to that. Yeah, a good thing about things on the web is that they're easily changed. I mean, so everybody, maybe people who have taken it, they wouldn't get to see your your additions, but everybody else will. Was well, there not was there not a vote to accept the survey though? I mean, is it not? We we did we did accept the survey, but we we can we can make additions to it if we have to. It was a draft. Uh, I yeah, mean, it's a, it's a survey. Yeah, it wasn't made available to the public at that time that you accepted it. So it's no, unfortunate yeah. that we couldn't see it because- Well, essentially the survey is, is so that they can get an idea of, of what they want to present at the, at the public meetings and what, you know, exactly how the town residents feel about uh, the stewardship plan. Right, and I think they left a lot of things off. That should have okay, been. well, please, well, please, uh, you know- So that's a good uh, comment. your opinions on that to, uh, to Mary. Okay, I'll express them to both. You and okay. I'll put sure. it in. So, and, and I would right, add any other any other comments on the on the stewardship plan? The, the, yeah, the, this is this is Marilyn Webster. <clears throat> oh, hi, um, Marilyn. Hi, um, I just scanned the survey, and I'm curious when they my about the process. So they are going to gather this information, and then present a plan to the town based on our priorities. Is that correct? Well, part of this input is so that they can put this program, this plan together. But, but then- This is for public input, this survey. Right. But I'm just sort of trying to understand how the whole process works. So based on some of the things I saw on the questions on the survey, parts of this plan are gonna cost money to implement. That's so right. I'm curious, I'm curious where that money comes from. Grant that we have. Pardon? We have a grant. Yep, yeah, but, but, but I, I those, thought that no, nothing, no, there's no implementation attached to the current effort. This is to make a plan. Any, any implementation would require funding. 
Okay, so then there'll be like grant seeking or something to fund the 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 plan that we choose to implement. Can you give us an example? Well, for example, one of the questions was seemed to be around like uh, paving trails to make them more accessible, and um, it just seems like paving trails is going to be pretty expensive. And so it just got me wondering wh how that would be funded if, if that's what ends up, if that's what like the majority of people want. Yeah, we, we, have a, we have a grant to do the plan. Anything past that implementation, we would need more funding, which we probably could get through another grant. Okay. Well, and my, my other question is they are planning to hold some public forums around this. How will those forums be like advertised? How will people find out about them so they can attend? Uh, we will we will have some information output through uh, through the website and uh, probably Conway Currents will probably have something in there. Um, there there'll be I'm sure there'll be plenty of uh, information um, extending through our website. Okay. So I mean, the, just the the other thing, you know, your initial question about process. Basically, I, I, my understanding of it is pretty much as you outlined. So, um, for what that's worth, I think that the 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 answers given throughout this survey process are going to be guiding the foresters and to to um, a significant extent is what we were um, informed about. So. Um, so, I mean, this is really your opportunity, any other concerned residents opportunity to influence policy is throughout through these meetings and through through the survey. I thought there, there are the the survey is not in complete alignment with sort of uh, another pro another NTWP project that we're talking about doing coming up, but it dovetails just to to, to an extent um, bigger than what I first thought, which is good and um, uh, you know, you, you can affect, you know, we, we, it can help us out in that one. And we can, um, you know, the, and, and then just the other thing that about the, the paving and everything else, the, they're going to be outlining projects that we could do as well. And not, 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 you know, they're, they're not hard and fast things that they're uh, recommending sort of un, unfunded mandates or anything like that. It's, it's so does that help? Yeah, and may I ask what the other project, upcoming project is? Yeah, I think I, I think you were, you had asked about this last week as well. This is the carbon credit. Okay. Um, I didn't know if it was also through them. No, no. Yeah, it, through it, the, it, the so MP whatever. <laughs> MPWP. Okay. A different round of grants. Um, right. So, um, yeah. We'll see okay. about that soon too. Any other questions on that? Okay, next item is the request to the moderator to postpone the town meeting till June 20th. All right, as you remember, uh, we were allowed to extend our town meeting, which, which originally was scheduled for today, tonight, uh, for 30 days. So we extended that from today, May 11th, to June 8th. Uh, it's our feeling that uh, we want to extend this a bit further, uh, not only because of the, the health environment right now, but also because the state doesn't have a lot of information to give us on budgeting. So kind of uh, uh, we, want to, we want to wait as long as we possibly can to do a town meeting um, so that we have enough information uh, and, and we're hopefully well on the way to uh, being open by uh, June 20th. June 20th. Right now we're looking at June 20th on the ball field at one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so and, and we can do that now because now we're within that 30 day period which we originally extended the meeting for. So that's why we're doing it and we have to do it in stages. All right. So if you're if you're not say, speaking, can you please mute? Please mute. I suspect it's you, Roy, because you just joined. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Thanks, Roy. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion. That we
request that the moderator postpone the town meeting until June 20th. Do I have a second? Have you consulted? Have, has Kenny been consulted on this as well? Has who? Uh, I understand that um, we that that our police chief has stated that um, he has a pre clear preference for either the parking lot at the grammar school, the new building next to the grammar <laughs> school, or the bar. Right. The we can we can change the location, Philip. That's not a problem. We can always change the location, all right? So that's not an issue right now. Right now we're voting to extend to the 20th, all right? Right, with a rain date of the 21st? With a rain date of the 21st or the 27th. Right. Okay? So that's what the motion is? The motion is to extend to the 20th, and we have rain date <laughs> in place for that, okay? Okay. All right. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Philip, Bob, yes. and myself. Three ayes. Okay. Uh, we have the Maya renewal proposal next. Uh, everybody has seen their renewal proposal? Yes. Any comments? Yeah, the rate, it's too high. <laughs> Philip. We need to shop Philip. for insurance. I said this last year, we needed, this is an 18% increase. It's because- <laughs> Philip, Philip, we, we had a workman's comp claim, claim that, that is the- mo Most of the increase is because Maya is the insurer of last resort for all kinds of poor and impoverished Massachusetts towns. And they're being sucked dry from these towns with excessive claims. And our town is subsidizing that. We need to get a new insurance company. That's nonsense, Philip, okay? Maya insures 175 towns in the Commonwealth. They are the experts on this, okay? If you, if, if you wanted to go out for another bid, you should have researched that back two months ago, all right? Um, I said it last year, I said it this year. It's a, it's a, that's a big, and it's a big chunk of change. And it only, well, a small, only a small part The reason that. for that is because we had a major claim on workman's comp. All right, that's the reason for that. A little bit of it. Any other discussion on the Meyer renewal? All right, I'll make a motion that we renew with Maya. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Phil? Aye. I'm a no on this. Okay, fine, you're a no. Bob, you're a yes, I'm a yes. Sorry, Phil. Bill, you had plenty of time to look at this. You talked to, to Mick on this. I, you know? No. Hey. It's too high. Business. Carl, Board of Health request for new glass compactor to save money on trucking. Carl, you yeah. Um, it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's a whole array of equipment. Um, there is a, there is a proposal to get a new compactor for cans and plastic and, 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 and then use our recycling bin for glass. Waste management doesn't want to, well, doesn't want to deal with glass anymore. So we can actually get a rebate from, from, uh, from the MRF for not putting in glass, but there still is a couple of outfits up in New Hampshire that'll take glass but there's nothing solid yet. They're not. They're not up and running. Um, but we will get debate. Uh, we will get rebates for haul costs and stuff like that over a period of time. And and for a for a twenty five and and you know, um, Janamine quoted twenty five thousand. I think it's going to be closer to thirty. Um, I th we're going to need some site prep up there at the transfer station. The the um, where we would put the where would we put the uh, um, the compactor would be like right about where the tires are now or where the where the composting is, so we'd have to you know we'd have to put a, a an extend the pad further back so there's some concrete there there's electric costs uh, I don't know that we have enough power we we run, we run actually from the from the uh, sh from the attendance shed out to the uh, to the uh, free store and then and then we go out to the to the uh, paper compactor from there, so that might involve another trench and more pipe to, to get to get the cable up there. So I'm thinking, 
to put the to put the paper compactor in it cost us ten thousand dollars in in add-on fees and stuff like that in order to get that done so i'm thinking that this is probably going to be another ten thousand dollars to do that but the good point of it is that uh we would and, and i don't know if you have your spreadsheet I, I have it up i have it up on the screen carl oh, oh cool okay um can you explain that to us explain what the whole spreadsheet well or just our parts con of the spreadsheet our, all right our conway line all right if you look at line eight see it, just, carl on the screen uh no i don't all i see is the agenda yeah me too you see the agenda huh yep don't see all right wait a second here just the agenda all right hold on a second Okay. Tom, do you have it? Could you share it? No, Tom can't share it. I got it. Okay. Getting a zoomed in close up of you, John. You are? Yes. All right. Now, if I could just find that spreadsheet, we're all set. <laughs> All right, why can't I find this spreadsheet? I'm afraid I don't have the answer for you, John. Well, maybe Carl. All right, that was a rhetorical question. Okay. Talk to it. Okay. Carl, could you describe it to us? Sure. I mean, it sounds like you know it by heart. Well, I, I don't know it by heart. I, I, I really, you know, got this from Jan Amin, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, you know, gave it to Tom to, to say, you know, would the, you know, the select board be interested in doing this? And, and since it's such a good return on investment, they, that Tom said, yeah, go, go ahead and ask me to present tonight. So here I am. Yeah, uh, I'll stick it up. Oh, there it is. Yay. Go on, Tom. Yay. Can you can you slide your view a little to the left? Get into get into column A. Ah. Ah, there we go. Okay. Cool. So we we're obviously the yellow line, line line eight or six, and uh the first column, the B column is is uh, the um Fiscal year 19, uh, 2019, that was how many tons of, of uh, recycling we did, uh, 81.73. And, and the brown number is, you know, because we, we kind of commingle our cans and plastics and, and, uh, and glass, and they, the experts at the MRF say, well, okay, 45% of everything that's recycled is glass. So that comes out to 36.78 tons. And then, of course, the balance of the containers is another 44.95 tons. Uh, it's just simple math. And um, the, uh, the amount of compactor hauls that we would run, propose to, to run, would, would, would be uh, what, what, what are compactor hauls? Oh, yeah, 15, 15 hauls in a year. And the number of compactor or the number of recycling runs we had in 2019 was uh, 53. 
So as you can see, we're, we're already hauling less. Um, the fiscal year 21, uh, fiscal year 21 uh, haul cost is going to be $200 a haul. Um, so so uh, you, you can see our, our, our prices are going up. Um, so we've got a, a compactor haul savings of $7,603. And also the, uh, let's see, oh, the, the MRF discount that we'd get for, for not shipping our glass to the MRF because it, it, the glass is hard on the equipment and, and, and everybody's saying that, you know, they don't, they don't want to do glass anymore. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of outfits in New Hampshire. One is planning on taking glass from this area and using it for, for making um, fiberglass insulation. And some other people are, are, are working on plans to use it for aggregate and whatnot. Um, so the number of glass hauls that we would have at, at five tons a haul or would be seven for the year. And the physical year 21 cost, haul cost would be $200. Um, and the glass, the glass cost would be $1,471. And then we got a compactor box rental. We'd actually have to uh, rent a, 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 the box that we were using to compact the, the uh, plastic and, and cans. So we got a, a net haul savings per year for 21 of $6,497. Now, if we take that number and divide that into 25,000, but you know, I think it's probably gonna be closer to 30, that would give you your, what your ROI, your return on investment is. So this projected, this spreadsheet here projects um, a 3.8 year uh, return on investment for, um, and, and, and it would cost us, it would take us two, two point, one or 3.1 years to um, to pay off the compactor at, at twenty thousand dollars. Now the compactors usually don't run a full twenty thousand. We always use that as a number. I know we put put the new trash compactor in, and that didn't have a doghouse. It just has a chute where you throw everything in. So that was quite a bit cheaper. But even even if we had to add the doghouse in, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have made twenty thousand dollars. And that was a brand that was a brand new compactor. And, and, and Jan, in her, in her write-up, is talking about you know being able to get refurbished compactors and stuff, probably at you know at a better at a better price. But um, you know I don't know how how we'd want to do that. You know, there's a lot more to this this whole pro project here than than a spreadsheet. Yeah. So so, so at thirty thousand dollars, we're talking about close to a little over four four years for yes. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that. That's it's still not too bad. How how do you how do you account for the fact that we have all this? Uh, it seems like we're way up there on our on our um, on our tonnage. Well, the the um, the truth of the matter is we are actually the people are paying attention now and and we're doing better with recycling than than we have in the past. Oh, okay, all right. So we're we're actually we're actually you know dealing with a lot lighter stuff. I mean, the, the guys, everybody else has been doing a good job educating the, the people in the town. So it's, that's working really good. All right. So that, that number actually means the higher the number, the better we're doing. Yes. Great. All right. Carl, can I just ask about, yeah. so are there any assumptions in this that could possibly change over the four years? You know, any of the assumptions behind the numbers, like just picking one at random, the $5 per ton MRF fee discount for no glass, I mean, is that something that could just change next year, or you know, and, and well, we're in a we're in a five year contract with this. So what we start out with in in fiscal year twenty one, we'll we'll be on a five year contract, but and we already know what those costs involved. It's already an escalator. It's already going up by by a given amount every year. So it, so there there shouldn't be any monster surprises. It should be all stuff that we that we know about. Should we be thinking in terms of the uh, also the money that that we have to uh, put in to uh, to implement this the uh, extra extra work around the transfer station? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the ten thousand dollars I was talking about. You know, the, the, essentially you look at a compactor at twenty thousand, 
and and then the you know there's another five thousand for uh, extending the concrete pads, running you know electricity out to it and stuff like that. I I think that it's going to be more than five thousand dollars to to kind of re reconfigure the, the 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 transfer station a little bit. All right, so we're talking thirty thirty thousand max. Yeah, I would I would say yeah, that's a good. Number. And we we can do this at a stabilization, Tom. Well, we're going to be having that discussion soon. Uh, let's make it part of that discussion. Okay. Car Carl, if we don't do it this year, could we do it next year? Yes. I mean, are there, I'm wondering, are there reasons why we really need to do it this year other than that it's got a good payback? Well, no. I mean, it, it's just that it, 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 everybody's going to have to be here eventually. If we're going to save any money off of, off of what we're paying for recycling, this is how we're going to do it. We just so happen to be. This is just a. This is a very bad year. Yeah, no, I know that. I, yeah. I, I know. I, Lord knows. I, yeah, I, yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I'm just saying that if you if you look at the the, you know, the 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 ROI on it, 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 it we happen to be one of three towns that are re really you have really good numbers. So I mean, maybe this could be something that we just sort of keep in our hip pocket in case the financial tsunami turns out to be less horrible than it. That's it's doable. I mean, I, you know, I, I try to differentiate between things that are expenses and things that are investments. Uh -huh. and, um, I think this this seems to fall pretty solidly in the latter yeah. category. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, but but times are really really tough. But it, it, if anything, next year by all accounts is going to be worse. Yeah, could be. Um, yeah, it's just that we're in a we're in a good spot right now to 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 do this, and we're going to have to do it eventually anyway, mm -hmm. in order in order to compensate for some of these some of these costs that are waste management's flying around, and and each year you know our our payment each year is going to ratchet up. It's on an escalator, so we're going up two percent every year. So it's becoming more and more expensive to the town the longer we keep from doing this. About how much expense? Like, what what would be the increase in cost next year as opposed to this year? I I'd, I'd have to rework the I'd have to rework this whole thing and figure that out. Like substantial, more than a, more than. Uh, I I don't think it would be substantial. Okay. I I think it would it would it would be a, a, an uptick, but but nothing no, not a killer. So I mean I don't know if we're going to be coming to a resolution on this tonight or or what, but I think. Well, this is just a, this is just something for you guys to think about. Yep. You know. Good. We well, can, but we, we got to talk about the money too. So. Yeah, we we're gonna we'll talk about this uh, for the budget a little later. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions for Carl? All right. Th thank you, Carl. You're welcome. We'll uh, back out of here, and I got to go to my board of health meeting. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey. Carl, it's raining. It's raining really hard where you're at. Yeah, it is. It's not raining right here in the middle of town. No, it's pouring out here. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. All right. Bye, Carl. Thank you. Okay. Where'd my agenda go? Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, reopening strategy, not including timeline. Production by the town administrator, Thomas. Yeah, I, I am just introducing this now. I wanted everybody to take a look at it and to let everyone know that um, uh, we are considering reopening strategies for the town. Uh, I sent out a very brief outline. Please let me know if you have any comments on that. Um, you know, this is in preparation for the May 18th, you know, in, in a week, we're going to get uh, notice from the state about who can do what when. And uh, I just wanted to be... Uh, uh, I just wanted to give you something in advance of that. 
and again, solicit your opinions, and uh, we'll take it from there. Tom, would you put that up on the screen? There it is. And this is what you sent us in the mail. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Increase the size of that, Tom. Uh, no, sorry. Well, maybe. Uh, huh. There we go. Hang on. Oh, you can see that. All right, good. All right, has everybody reviewed this? Yeah. And, and again, you know, I'm looking for comments, tweaking, nuances, concerns, comments, anything. Any questions for Tom? The reinstall the half door at the treasure at the doorway didn't didn't we just take didn't we just switch to oh no that was for I don't didn't we just make a door change in that building? Uh, not since I've been here. Oh, uh, okay. Never mind. I thought we made the door bigger right by the front door that, that goes into the lower office section. Nope. No. For wheelchair access. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, okay. Maybe we <laughs> talked about it. This is a door for the treasurer's section. Yeah. Yes, it's a half door with a counter on it. Right. <laughs> yeah, we would we would redirect people for the town clerk around back. Okay. Unless they were unable to, you know, unless they needed an accessible entryway. Right. Okay. Any questions for Tom on this? This is evolving, of course. Yeah. So first draft. You know, one of the things is the the, uh, the maintain current conference and Zoom accounts, which I agree with, um, but I do wonder about. Um, can, you know, can, can we really start to look into adding the digital signing ability? And I just say that now because Frontier now ha and Union 38s have now completely transitioned to Adobe Sign, and um, in, in which they, when they send you the warrants, you as the person that they seek the signature from, when they send you warrants um, for signature, they send all the the whole file comes digitally, um, uh, and uh, you can sign it in, uh, in a digital signature and it's very easy to use, uh, very glitch free. I was very impressed with it. And I do understand that um, Shelly, the business manager and their IT people will assist towns that are interested in getting it. But um, it's, it would eliminate the trip down between nine and one um, to the, to the town hall and, and, and whatnot. And I think all, all the different committees might benefit from being able to digitally sign things. So um, that's what I have about that. Yeah, I can look, I can look into that. Especially since Roy's here. So I figured he would appreciate the digital signing conversation. Yeah. I'd support that. Yeah, well, just let, let me know any comments you have on this. That would be it. All right, great. Um, all right, next item is our joint meeting with the Finance Committee. Is our Finance Committee here? Alan Singer's here. Hey, Alan, how are you? Greetings. Good. You're looking good. I think I need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and Roy is here. Anyone else from your committee here? Tom Donovan should be calling in. He has the information. 
Hey, Roy. Hi. Brianna going to be on, do you know? Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, she knows the information, man. Yeah. She's been invited for that way a couple of times. Okay. Yeah, that's not so great, huh? Yeah. Can we come back to it? Well, there's not much more to do. Yeah. Tom, you want to do your update first? Or can we see if we get another uh, finance committee member online? Yeah, I think they'd be on by now. We're uh, we're 25 minutes late, so I don't anticipate getting anyone else. But I'm happy to give my update. Um, nice. You want to you want to wait, or do you want to go into the revised town budget and warrant? We're not gonna we're not gonna vote on anything tonight. We'll just we're just gonna review it. Tom, why don't you take that up next? Uh, all right, I want to be sure um, everybody got the uh, the memo that I sent out. Um, I'm uh, I'm putting it up now. <clears throat> Did everybody get this memo? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of points for your consideration, one through seven. Uh, I have the package of proposals, one, two, and three. The first one has to do with Article 2, the second art, uh, with uh, existing articles, and the third with additional articles. Um, and, you know, based on the last discussion, we might also consider something for the uh, Board of Health uh, recycling effort. Um, Since you've all seen it, I will assume that you all have absorbed the potential changes and go to um, the um, what it looks like. And so the uh, proposed changes here are in red. And I think that's the... Yeah, the, um, can't quite get everything on the same. Oh, let me, I'll reduce it a little bit. Sorry if that makes it harder to read, but um, major changes are funding the uh, scheduled highway truck replacement through capital stabilization instead of free cash. Um, adding uh, general stabilization and free cash. I say to reserve fund here, but I, I, I think it should really go to the general fund uh, and we'll need specific numbers on that and how it gets divvied up is, is kind of up to you guys. We use more free cash if, uh, though we don't have much free cash to use, uh, we could free up some for the uh, Board of Health if you wanted to do that. Um, I'm suggesting paying our other post-employment benefits for FY21 out of our OPEB trust fund, which would lower the Article 2 amount. Uh, there is some... Um, uh, we need um, to supplement our debt service uh, to pay for the highway garage um, as, as planned because, you know, we, uh, we adopted that policy of uh, subsidizing the uh, debt payment through free cash. That's $27,000. Um, hang on. One thing that is not... 
in here that ought to be, we, we also need to add the debt service for the highway garage. We did not do that. That's uh, $77,000. Hello. You mentioned that last week, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry, I do not seem to have gotten that into this into this document. Um, well, you you so put it over on the be, right side, right there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's on. Um, it's under uh, where it says a package of proposals. It's under Article Two, um, as as the bottom item. And um, I, I have it there in in uh, in a bracket uh, because it's it's not actually optional. <laughs> it's uh, it's <laughs> mandatory because we're we're going to do the borrowing. Yeah. So that's that that's where that is. In. Uh, in this document, it's there under a package of proposals. Um, so, Tom, are, are we going to talk about like trading things here? Is that, it? I mean, what kind of input would we do? Well, I would like to know what people think about this package of proposals. And you have the chart to show you, you know, kind of where, where it fits in with everything else. Uh, and again, I apologize for not getting the debt payment in there. Um, and this is where you can see the free cash general stabilization and capital stabilization levels. Uh, I'm wondering how important it is to pay OPEB this year. I mean, well, I cut it from 20 down to 10. Uh huh. I think it's good to put some in every year that, that, that shows forward motion. Yeah, it's a good idea to put something in there every year. But it can be skipped in an emergency. Yeah, that, that's yeah, what it I can be. You know, it's like now that I'm approaching 72, I'm required to take something out of my 401k type money, you know, required money. But the Fed said, but you don't have to do it this year. You know, that it's, it's like this is an emergency year there. And that's what OPEB feels like to me. So, I mean, uh, well, Remember, I'm also proposing to take a lot of money out of OPEB this year. So, um, oh, how does really? that factor into your thinking? As I just explained, yeah. I'm proposing paying our OPEB costs out of the OPEB trust fund. Oh, uh, That's $38,000. I'd go along with that. And then, that's, put, and, that's then that putting, line. and then putting ten thousand dollars back into it. Yes. Okay. So the so we're really talking a net effect on the uh, budget of twenty eight thousand dollars. But I guess your feeling is it's it's very important to have that ten thousand go in there regularly, or whatever it is every year. Yeah, and if you see what I highlighted at the, at the bottom of the last page. That's the OPEB fund position at you doing both of those things. Right. Oh, that's with uh, 58, uh, 38, 48, 53. No, plus the $10,000. So the balance will be 25,835. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any problems with that. The same way the capital stabilization, I'm, Proposing continuing to fund that at one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, if you're yeah. really looking for savings, yeah. you know, you could look there. But uh, you know, again, I, as long as we can preserve our our um, positions and our traditional annual funding of things, I, I think we ought to as much as we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be a place to look to get the money for Carl. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, to, to me, these, the, there's a lot of like inter, interrelated issues here and, you know, and uh, you, you, you can start with sort of school funding and I, uh, um, you know, the, the frontier budget committee meeting that I'm on has been, uh, has been meeting, um, a lot these past few days and you know the reason is because by law there has to be a school budget 45 days before town meeting and Deerfield decided there's going to be June 1st so the clock is ticking and um, there needs the, the school committees need to be voting on a budget this, for this week um, um, and next week for and so you know that and there's a we, we really tried to see what how close we could get to a level funded school budget. Um, because it, it's not just from the taxpayer point of view, but because from the institutional point of view, from the superintendent and the administration, it's really, really unpleasant and difficult to make cuts mid year. Um, mm -hmm. And that if, if there's a choice between setting it up so that you um, pass a jet, a, but a, a a, a, a budget and then if it works out if it doesn't work out good you then go back to town meeting and ask for cuts or if it's the other way around try to cut your budget and then go back to town meeting if it if it's better and ask for more and and that's the the, the emerging consensus from the school um, committees um, that, that the desire is to try to to try to make cuts on the school budget um, so that it, it has a more realistic chance of emerging through all four of our towns um, in the middle of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so that um, if, if things turn out better than we fear, uh, we can then go back and, and, and ask for more. And there's a whole lot, there's so much that goes into all of that. But the, the long and the short of it is that in order for Frontier to do a level funded budget, that that is... Um, an overall reduction in the a, a level budget is an, a re requires a reduction to the frontier budget of 4.29 percent or five hundred and five thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars and will require the loss of two teachers and so you know we I just hope that that's not just something that everybody just wants to do because um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that there's some prioritization and a discussion of what's important and that it, you know, if you're going to, you know, cause two teachers to lose their jobs at the frontier school, um, you know, it, is that the sacrifice that, that we think is, it, it is appropriate versus something else in the budget that is perhaps less meaningful to many people. Um, and, and it, you know, there, there, so as, as you talk, as we keep talking about things and, you know, oh, it would be nice to keep doing this, but, you know, compare in your own mind, is this what we cut instead of two teachers jobs? Um, because Frontier could get close to level funded and, and you know, be, ha have a budget that's sort of less than 1% and still save two teachers jobs. And is that, you know what I'm getting at, John? Yeah, the, the sentiment of the um, of the three chairs was we want to get it as close to level funded for Frontier as possible. I, I don't think there'd be an argument about if we could save two teachers jobs, then certainly I think we want to do that. And, and so I see Darius on the call here. Is, could, would he be willing to unmute or is that not Darius? I'm here. Hi, Darius. Hello. Darius, how are you doing? What a pleasure. Yeah. So, Darius, give us some input here. <laughs> um, give you some input. Um, <laughs> sure you want it? No, just joking. Um, well, right now, I mean, I'm in a spot where I, I really can't speak for the, the school committee. I mean, they have, we have a meeting tomorrow where they're going to kind of kind of go through this information, um, you know, but basically, you know, I think Phil kind of outlined the, you know, a level funding doesn't mean level funding is actually a reduction. Um, and I think, I think we're all in the same boat where, 
what's interesting this year is we don't know what the we don't have our uh, we don't have the recipe to make our budget. Right. Exactly. And so yeah. it's very difficult. You know, I, I heard comments from people um, from the community or leaders in the community saying, um, "Well, can we? Uh, we'll see what the schools can do." Well, that, to me, that puts a, puts us in a in a I say us, but me um, taking the lead on it um, in an, an awkward spot because what is so? How far do we go to what are the needs of the schools are versus what is a adequate, you know, desired programming that we want our schools to have. You start doing value judgments without having numbers to equate what the values are. So that's why it's really hard to go in and, and you know, I got, you know, I got a letter that says, oh, can you cut 5%? Well, you know, I can cut, I can cut 30% if you want. I mean, we can just teach two subjects and we can make it really, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like you can go as far as you have to go, but um, it's, it's difficult to do without, you know, really knowing where we're going. And I know nobody has, no, no select committee or finance committee has the, the, the crystal ball to say, this is where we need to be. And this is where we're confident with. There's a whole lot of, you know, people just, I understand not confident. And so it's very difficult. Um, so I, you know, we're gonna discuss something close to a level budget tomorrow at Frontier. Um, and then, you know, the idea is that Frontier, my concern was when you look at the bigger budget, if Frontier, doesn't reduce um, by a certain amount, then the, the burden's going to be on the town to make up the difference in the um, elementary of the difference it doesn't reduce uh, of its proportion of the budget of the uh, of education within the budget. So, and I understand that usually it's, you know, we got, we don't have four towns at once having a problem. Usually it's one, one town has a problem with its assessment. We kind of smile, we, we uncomfortably laugh at each other. Um, but um, this year is very different, obviously. And then the other concern is that 22, as you guys mentioned earlier, looks a lot worse than this year. And so, you know, what can we prepare for 22? Because, you know, Frontier does have some reserves. Um, but to how much do we, how much do we cut into those? And then the side of education that is also unknown is when you talk about what does September look like? Well, I don't know. And I don't know if uh, it's going to cost more. And we start talking about having to get all the personal protection devices and if we have to get masks for all people, if we're going to have employees going out on FMLA, following the coronavirus FMLA, where they can you know, be out if they're um, of high risk or if there's someone in their family that's susceptible to it, that's going to cause additional co cost. The cost of special education, if we had a student in our building that was is medically compromised, they may not be allowed to be in the building, so we're going to provide out-of-building service. That could cost more. I mean, these are all, these are all again, the things we got to figure out. Um, and so, again, I don't know where that's all going to land. And so, you know, we got to put some money aside just to deal with some of those unknowns in that budget. The same with the elementaries as well, obviously on different scales. Um, the, the elementaries can work with the towns, I guess, on how do you do, you know, reserves if we have to purchase or if we have sped reserve problems that are larger than we anticipate. Conway, I think, is in a little better shape than some of the other towns in that regards. But um, so, I mean, those are all the kind of the kind of issues um, that you know we're discussing. So, a lot of moving targets within our own budget, and I know there's a lot of moving targets. In budget, so. Arius, aren't you glad that we selected you? What's that? <laughs> you know, aren't you glad that we selected you? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, we we kind of laugh about that a little too much, like. <laughs> Um, you know, the I, last the last thing the last thing I'd want to see is that we have to to you know fire two teachers. So whatever we can do to keep those jobs in place, I'm in favor of. Yeah, and I, and I think we're going to lead that way. I mean, we lead with the idea that let's do as much reduction without affecting programming as possible. You know, we want to give the kids the most rich environment, the richest environment we can. I mean, educationally rich, not just money. That's all on television here. Yeah, um, we just want to make sure that you know we give as much of the programming that we can get, and if we're cutting programming, um, you know, the least impact as possible each step of the way. And I think I think any good administrator is going to say that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're looking at we have a different proposals for tomorrow night. Um, I got to go to my bosses, which is the school committee first, let them kind of digest it um, and see what they they come out with. Uh, come out with that. But I think, you know, we're hearing the, the needs from reductions from the towns. Um, the question is how much, and I think, and it's, I think even the towns are struggling to figure out, you know, and, and, and people are being sincere. We got great, 
leadership in our towns in the sense that they, they care about education, but they also, you know, they're also sincere about, you know, we don't know how much to cut. We don't, you know, and we don't, you don't want to overcut because you don't want to under deliver to your, the kids. But at the same time, as Phil was saying, if we undercut and then we have to do mid, mid year cuts, um, there's a lot of, just to put on your radar, there's a lot of things that puts frontier vulnerable where the towns are not. Mid-year, well, you'll be cut differently. You know, the 9C cuts hit you guys a little bit differently, but it also hits frontier. It, it hits, you know, transportation for the sum of the last recession. Um, they hit transportation, they 35% reduction. So we start doing that, you're talking about, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars, you know what I mean? They'll come out of transportation. Mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously we're gonna have to take from other, you know, so everybody's hit differently about how the state is gonna react. The good news in education world is they have made it a priority of chapter 70 in the past. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think people are going to say that, um, you know, I was on with the legislators, legislators on um, Friday on a joint call in Western Mass to talk to them. And one of the points brought up by superintendents is that you need to fund the schools as a state because the schools fund the economy. The amount of people it employs, not, not only in the district itself, but, you know, as it carries out. You know, the being able, you know, and education helps build an economy. So we we pushed that to the legislators on Friday. Um, I mean, they got their hands full too, and I don't think we told them anything they didn't know. But <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. tried, you know. Well, um, I I would I would think they're not going to cut any Chapter 70 funds. You know, I th that that was what happened last time we had this problem. You know, at, at the recession in 2008 2009. So I would expect that they're going to do everything they can to fully fund the schools. So just, just the other thing about that, just to add a little bit, is that although, I, you know, I, from what we looked at, they, they have kept Chapter 70 intact in previous recessions. Yeah. But there's also a long history of using the budget, the, the governor's veto pen, the 9C cuts, to go after the, the, the regional transportation. And a, a, a right in, this year, they were scheduled to reimburse us 74%. If that's cut to 50%, that's a loss to Frontier of over $200,000. And that's, um, which, which would more than, you know, which, which would be very bad. Um, so. Can I, can yeah. I, I have two questions. Can I add, uh, Phil? Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, so Phil, Earlier, were you alluding to the, uh, the 150,000 contribution to capital stabilization that we might want to divert some or all of that to the schools? Was that, was that kind of what you were getting at? I don't think so. Um, no. No. I, okay. No. Um, div I, if anything, divert that to the taxpayers <laughs> the, to lower the no, no. Um but, okay, but uh, so the that, second that, that, question for Roy. Roy, I thought that Phil said instead of putting it in capital stabilization, to spend it directly on capital in the form of the uh, the new compactor for glass. Oh, okay. The new no, the compactor isn't. Uh, it's thirty thousand. Right. Not, I mean, some of it. Right. Okay. Okay. So he he wasn't suggesting reducing that amount. That uh, zero. Uh, no. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry. I'm speaking for you, Phil, but. But I mean, no, but I mean, those types, those to, to me personally, I would vote to reduce things like capital contributions for a year than, than professional losses at the schools. So, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 unless we're at the point where well, services just, have to be cut, you know, if, if, if we still live in a digital world, in a virtual world, then, you know, maybe staff well, reductions make sense, but, you know, long term, but... So I, I have one other question, and this, I guess, is for Darius. Uh, maybe you know, Phil, and that is, what's the, um, any, any discussion about um, the transportation in general, given, let's say, you know, assuming we're going to still be, you know, under a no closed spaces kind of uh, directive here? I mean, do we know what, you know, is it, is it possible that there wouldn't be any transportation? Well, expense. You, you bring up a good point. One of the other options, which is, um, you know, gets very, uh, you know, like I'd say, kind of scary-ish in the sense that we're still in the, a COVID lockdown come reopen with no 
no uh, daylight in it, you would think there would be reductions in the budget, including transportation and other things. But those would all be um, have multiple things I'd have to negotiate with, from unions to transportation to we all have contracts with, and there would be a lot of legal jargon. But I'm just saying it that way, being vague because I don't want to make proclamations in a public meeting of what would happen and that, that kind of thing. But you could see that if we went back to you know the the kind of setup we are in now. Um, you know, I think Bill just alluded to, there may be less services and there could be reductions, that could be some savings. Um, you know, it, unfortunately, it's not the kind of savings we want because we're not delivering, a, you know, school to be, school being, schooling being delivered online is not the schooling that we are set up to do. You know what well, I mean? I think everybody well, I, knows I, that. I, I, of course, I understand that. So in actuality, it's possible, um, especially if they're talking about, uh, you know, staggering uh, grades for certain days and stuff like that, um, the transportation. But it, it's still, it's just the physical act of putting, you know, 20 kids in a bus or whatever, or 30 kids in a bus. I know that parents have come to see that as a, uh, you know, it's a convenience, but it might, the kids might, you know, I, again, the authorities might, think that that might be unsafe, but it's still okay for, you know, limited numbers of kids to be in school each day. Yeah, that's the, and I'll tell you, even as an administrative team, that's the rabbit hole that we keep on sticking our head down um, in the sense of what could it look like? How do you do spacing? How does spacing work? Then how do you do spacing of someone who got sick in that spacing? It, I don't see, I don't see how they're rolling it out, but the positive side is I've said to people is that we've been, you know, in two days, we'll been two months so, you know, we, we started on March um, 13th, you know, May 13th will be in two days. That'll be two months in. We have another, we have the same amount of time, no, actually longer than amount of time before school reopens. So a lot of changes have happened in COVID in two months, including treatments and stuff. You know, I'm trying to be on my optimistic side. I say, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there'll be some better treatments and better kind of control on what's going on and better testing. Um, but then the pessimistic side is that school will not be returned to as we know it. So you know, that would, you know, where that lands is we do just like our budget in some sense. We need more information to really make decisions. And so I've kind of said like the same thing about summer school. We're waiting to June 1st before we say we have enough information regarding that because um, we do have summer services that we have to do, provide. That's outside of the ones we used to do on top of that for enrichment. Um, and then, you know, at some point during the summer, we'll have to make the call about what does it look like to reopen. But um, a lot of schools are planning and doing a lot of different things. Um, I was on the call today with the superintendent from Eastern Mass, who's probably got more students than we have in our county. Um, and they're a barge. They have to start planning now if they're going to move things. You know, we're much more nimble. You know, we got a, we're a much more nimble school because we're smaller. I think we have great teaching staffs that work well with the administration. So I think we don't need to be preparing for three months. I think we could, you know, we can see how it rolls out. There's going to be a lot of demands from the state and that kind of stuff. So. Um, it's going to be some of it's wait and see because it's it's hard to get ahead of stuff we don't know. Yeah. Can I only comment? Thank you. Can, can Thanks, I Thanks back one, Can I go back one segment just on the uh, Chapter 70 funding? You have to remember that they also promised a ton of SOA money, Student Opportunity Act, and that was falling under Chapter 70. So it'll be interesting to keep an eye on how they reallocate the money they do put towards Chapter 70 in all these districts that were going to receive millions and millions, um, some of the bigger districts, the urban districts, and how they're going to go about re, re, how they're going to re, you know, distribute those funds. You know what I mean? The federal government funds is going through Title I, which we get very little of in our district. Um, so there's not a lot of federal bailout to us. And hopefully that federal money will be more pushed toward the urban areas. And so the urban areas that were taking a lot of the SOA money hidden into Chapter 70. They call it SOA, but it was part of your Chapter 70 fund. Um, you know, hopefully they make sure that the, that the smaller communities like us don't get kind of lost in that shuffle. So I just say that out loud when you're talking to mm -hmm. your legislators and the legislators mm -hmm. and such. So. Thank, thank you, Darius. You're welcome. Darius, while you're here, uh, I, you know, all of my friends with kids or grandkids that go to Frontier and also Conway Grammar really feel you guys have stepped up in providing an online education you know that the, I, I i can't imagine how the teachers have done this switch and it's, how uh, they're pulling it off you know we were able to get we got ahead of it early um and I, and I have to tip my hat to the teachers they went with the 
Some districts waited weeks and weeks until I had a full plan come down from the top. Our teachers, we went with the model of let's get in the houses immediately, make connections. It was just reading out loud with the kids. And then we built up, built up more rigor from that to do what we're doing now. So I gotta keep my hats off to the teachers who, you know, um, you know, they could have pushed back and said, no, we want to see a full organized plan, but they saw the right thing and it worked out, that worked out well. And we are doing, a, uh, we are doing an excellent job, um, you know, and, and we had some things in place to do that. Good teaching staff. We had the technology we could dole out very quickly. I mean, we just pulled out the laptop carts and where the Chromebook carts and just started handing out to those in needs. And, and the families have been working with us too. So all around, I think everybody, one big, one big hug. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Darius. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for Darius? All right. Th thank you for coming in. See you. Yeah. Soon. All right. I'm going to take off, guys. Take care. All right. Take it easy. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. All right. All right. Thomas, uh, any items not anticipated? Hang on one second. Um, what I'm really looking for is. Um, is some uh, direction on how to go forward and present a warrant to you next week. So if we could, um, if we could look again at, uh, at the proposals and, and go through them and see which ones people generally like and generally don't like, that'll allow me to, uh, to start working on something for next week because we're going to have to have something pretty soon after the school has something, like within, certainly within two weeks. Um, and it would be good to have something pretty close. Um, I mean, certainly within three weeks, it would be good to have something close in two weeks. So next week, um, you know, the more we can do now to prepare for, for something to discuss next week, you know, to have in front of you and to look at would be better. So if we can go through these, these um, uh, proposals, that would be really helpful. All right, go ahead, Thomas. Um, what do we do about wages and salaries? What is Frontier doing, Phil? <clears throat> so, um, th this, th this is a whole nother thing. So, um, so we, we have the fr Frontier, just like, you know, just like the town is 60 something percent school budget. The school budget is 84% wages. Um, so, and um, the vast majority of them are union. So, so the, the, but what's budgeted, what was in the budget that we had previously submitted for this year, um, it was budgeted for the major unions for 2%. Um, the, the union 38 for our elementary school, as, as many of you know, that we, um, we were unable to agree on a three-year contract. We went into arbitration, um, we then voluntarily uh, mutually dismissed the arbitration and we agreed on a one year contract, which expires in uh, August 1st. Um, Are, isn't Frontier planning for a 2% across the board so, so for that three years? Is, so, th so that is what is in the budget um, or, or what was in the budget. So, and this is one of the things because there are, um, w especially with the, with, uh, with, with, the Union 38. There are um, there there are ways to address this. I, I I need to speak in executive session about some of this stuff. I'm really sorry. I'm trying to calculate how I can talk about this and not talk about negotiating strategy. Um, but um, maybe we can put an executive session to talk about negotiating strategy next week. Um, or or Phil, well, with 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 all of that stuff, would you support 1.6? So, um, it, it, it depends what the overall numbers are, and, and, and again, like what the school budget is, and, and, and how it, whatever. You, to, to me, yeah, one point six is, is is something doable. It is what Deerfield. I think Deerfield has budgeted one point five, um, but I I do know that Waitley and I believe Sunderland are looking at zeros. Um, yeah, they are. They are. I think and, they all are at this point. And the the one point six would be a little bit under ten thousand dollars. So and, and and you know just going back to the things that I've said previously about negotiating with our unions, they have lists of all of the municipal salary increases, and you know 
what, what the, the, if, if things get terrible, if things get truly terrible, and the only way for Frontier to save money is to go to the unions and ask for concessions and give backs on current contracts. And there is historical precedent for that. There's legal guidance for that. There's case law on that. But the long and the short of it is that can't really be done. And this is, uh, I'm not giving anything away because the union knows what the law is. That it can't, you can't do that. You can't get concessions until you have solid data until you have solid information that you can point to and, and that the, the, because you have to be able to do it in such a way that you will win any subsequent grievance or any subsequent arbitration or mediation that comes out of that whole set of behaviors. So, okay, so let's skip this one for now because no, we're no, not gonna no, have enough information no, no, no. to make the decision. Let's go on to the next one. Tom, I'm here in the, you know, well, I didn't hear a bad no there from Phil, which, I, I thought, no, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm generally, uh, you know, it, it, it's okay. The, the, the thing about that is that as, as long as that Article 2, as reconstituted, still includes the substantial increase to the town clerk, the substantial increases for the administrative assistant, the, the you know, and as long as, you know, and this is true for all the towns, that how how fair is it to go and open up union contracts, you know, without also opening up all the other employment contracts that the towns are involved in, including town administrator contracts. And that it's, you know, what, what, I mean, this is John, this is all like part of it. And I, I, I you think that it's all different or whatever, but th this, I'm trying to, to like set the, the, what, what the framework would have to be in order to successfully get, employee give, uh, union give backs because it's not out of the realm of the possible it's but but and you know the fr frontier is planning for for truly nightmare scenarios um way beyond what we're talking about in this yeah and and that we should all be doing that as well um, all right we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna skip this for now all right what next item tom okay reduce um Reducing line 900 by paying OPEB costs out of the OPEB trust fund. That's a yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, further departmental reductions. This is not complete. Um, I asked people if they could possibly get back to me by today on things. Um, but, uh, you know, I realized it was late notice. So next week I will have any proposals that we have. Um, right now, the assessors can put off 10,000. Um, and uh, I've, I've found 2,700 I can take out of my own budget. I haven't heard back from anyone else about their operating budget. All right, let's, let's get on them this week. All right, I'm, I'm good with yeah. that too. Uh, and, and we will have to add that, um, 77,000 for debt service. Okay. Great. Fine. Uh, change, uh, changes to existing articles, reducing OPEB funding. We could reduce it by half or less or more. That's good. That's good. Okay. T 20 to 10. Uh, reduce replenishment of the grant match funds from 15,000, which is a full replenishment to 5,000, which brings it up to half where it was. That's good. Go uh, change the funding source from the highway truck from free cash to capital stabilization. I'm especially interested in what Bob and Roy have to say about this as members of the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. What do you guys think? We didn't talk a lot about where the money comes from, only about what was important. Yeah. But, but th so this implies the difference is, uh, you know, a majority vote versus two thirds, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so th this is two thirds, but um, this frees up free cash. Um, and right. I th I'm thinking we need to be flexible in our spending capabilities going forward. 
Yeah, that, was part of, that was part of a proposal that Jan Warner had put forward to uh, you know, lessen the impact on property tax rate increases if we do this. That was all part of the package we voted on this past December, right? That truck's got two. Neither of these. That's Neither of these would have an impact on property taxes. They're they're both town funds. They're not raise and no, appropriate. It's, it's just a matter if the town meeting is grumpy and doesn't feel like uh, you know committing to it from from the yep. stabilization. I suppose you could then change it to the free cash. You know, I don't know. That that truck's going to have a tough time passing town meeting. Period. Doesn't matter how you fund it. Well, Ron should drive the old one and park it out front and let you look at it. That that wouldn't that's not a bad idea in all seriousness. <laughs> Good idea, Tom. Free cash to stabilization. Yeah, I, I saw that's yeah. gonna agree. Okay. Um we we do need to add an article uh for reducing the debt. Uh, that, and have that money come from free cash, uh, 27435 That was a policy decision that was made, um, but it needs to go into the draft warrant. Um, otherwise, the 77000 would be a lot more. All right, that's good. Opinions? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Alan, Roy, what do you think? Well, that's part of what we negotiated already as part of the financing we got for the garage with Greenfield Cooperative Bank. So, yeah, <laughs> I think we have, we have to go along with it. Right. It's huh. fine. This, this, already, this may be an earlier OPEB. version. We already mentioned the OPEB trust fund. Yeah, this may be an earlier version of the file. I think I remember correcting that. But uh, anyway, um, the next thing is, um, and, and, and you know, this is, this is a tricky one. Um, this, you know, okay, so we make these changes, um, and you, one thing that, that is not on here yet that we should also talk about is, you remember I sent out the Excel sheet with 5, 10, 15, and 20% cuts. Right. Um, you know, we can make a 5% cut without much pain, but what that means is we'll have virtually no free cash from FY20 going into 21. We could make maybe a 7% cut um, and, and just, um, you know, di different departments are different. Um, the highway department spent 99.88% of its operating funds. Uh, Ron always comes in really, really close. Um, you know, so that's that's one one item to consider. One thing I'm not considering is defunding the winter roads, going into a deficit and paying that back in FY22 because I don't think FY22 is going to be any better than FY21 in terms of revenue. Um, that's a possible. But we, we, yeah, but we could. We could cut the operating budget, but the effect of that would be to drastically reduce the amount of free cash that we um, send into FY22 when I think we're going to be needing it. Yeah. So uh, one of the yeah. things, one of the ways that I'm proposing to address that is to use general stabilization and capital stabilization and do what I swore I would never do as a town administrator, which was propose propping up the operating budget. Um, and, you know, rather than raising and appropriating, uh, put this money into the general fund um, for use in operating budget. And, I, and, you know, it could go into the reserve fund, um, uh, but uh, I was talking with the accountant today, and he thinks the general fund would be fine. Um, and to authorize spending that money, and what we'd have to do is come up with some some criteria to say, okay, our our revenue came in this much less. We're going to use, you know, we're we're only going to use 
money from those two sources if the revenue comes in lower than we're expecting and we'll use it in this proportion. We'll use more general stabilization or less general stabilization. I prefer using more general stabilization when possible, uh, again, because free cash is flexible and can roll over to the next year. Um, and, but it, it's, it's, it's not a hugely significant difference. We can always vote one or the other into, into the other sort. You know, well, we, we can always vote free cash into general stabilization if we need to. Um, the, the problem so, is that we, we're already sort of like driving the car blind and sort of this, this sort of adds, uh, I, I don't really understand the fear of just having another town meeting and why, if, why you're trying to do these gymnastic kind of things, um, that, that seemed like a really challenging draftsmanship issue, just number one, but, but, um, no, that, 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 that part isn't difficult. The, the question is, what do we do if we have a revenue deficit? And, you know, if, if, yes. Um, so we have one maybe in December when the, um, what, what, what we can't do is authorize spending without having the money to pay for it. So if we authorize this spending, if we don't need it, we don't spend it. But that's still required to assess it, to, to, to assess the, 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 in, the, to assess residents' income in order to generate that in the first place. And we are better off not doing that. No, so, uh, Tom, your uh, revenue shortfalls, no. you, Tom? Yeah. Tom. Yeah, so yeah. Are, are, you, are you talking here revenue shortfall due to, um, uh, you know, property taxes not being uh, collected in a timely yes. manner? Yes. That's, that's what you're talking well, about. It includes, th this is in the Excel sheets that I sent out. Um, there's property taxes, motor vehicle excise taxes, yeah, yeah, and some yeah, other sources that I looked at from, from the Great Recession, 2008, 2009, which were the two higher years when it affected Conway. The state was more affected in 2009, 2010. Um, and I came up over those two years, Conway lost $318,000 in revenue. And so to be conservative, because this is a broader based recession. It's not just finance and real estate. Um, I was proposing using the larger figure. What we should not do is pass a budget that we don't have the money, that we're not confident we have the money to pay. Right. And that's, that's why I'm proposing right. authorizing this, authorizing spending this money. Yeah. Because otherwise we're talking about mid-year cuts to Conway's budgets. Right. And, th and those would be really painful. Yeah, that's no good. That's no good. But, but the, the thing about this is that, you know, the, the, whole, the whole sort of theme of town meeting should be, you know, because it's going to be messy, is that it's not our fault, that this is the state's fault because they don't have the numbers. To, we don't know what our income is. And it's and, and, and that when, you know, the, the idea that, you know, we're not all the town, we're all going to be guessing wrong. We are all going to need town well, meetings. But, but all Philip, to all, this, all this is doing is putting a reserve in place. Right, that's, that's it. Yeah. No, it's, it's authorizing us to spend out of the reserve when the option, the natural inclination should be to take a, another look at our budget and make cuts to spending instead and cuts to anticipated spending instead of just make pre-arranging that we will raise and assess money from taxpayers to pay the deficit. We should cut. Okay. The neither of these are raising and assessing this money is, from taxpayers. Not, this is not taxes, Philip. This is from the, from free cash and capital stabilization. Returning it to taxpayers and lowering the assessment then it's just, I, that's just the, the, so if you look at, if you look at the figures I presented, you save a certain amount of money if you cut 20% of the operating budget, but leave wages and salaries 
level funded and pay for all of the external things we have to pay. That would, that would not approach the $318,000 in revenue we might lose. So if you don't want to do this, we need to identify 308, I would recommend identifying $318,000 in the operating budget that we should not fund. We should cut. And I don't think we have to do that, and I certainly don't want to do it, but you, you, know, you could cut 20% out of the operating budget, which would cause a certain amount of pain. And that, even that's not going to get you to 318,000. And maybe that's too big a number. It sounds like too big of a number, Tom. It really does. The, the, well, you saw where I got it. So the, uh, what, what I'm just trying to say is that, that you need to, instead of just automatically going to something where we are authorized to spend out of free cash for the operating budget revenue deficit, that there needs to be a built-in mechanism for us to take another look at spending and make cuts to spending based instead of just automatically backfilling it with revenue. So that's what I'm saying. Tom, Tom, I have a question. So um, yeah, let's say let's say for the sake of argument, you know, whatever. Let's say three hundred thousand dollars of uh, property taxes are, are have not come in. Now those that is that is really. Could we borrow against this somehow? Because that that's, seems to me it's very secured. Eventually, those taxes are paid. It might take 10 years or whatever it is, but eventually they do get paid. We can borrow in anticipation of taxes. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit Hesitate worried that... to do that. It, yeah, What's and that? It, it may go beyond the fiscal year we would end up paying interest on those loans. Now, there, there'll be low interest loans for sure, state house notes, um, but uh, you know, we, we could borrow in anticipation of that revenue. Well, Dan Warner has recommended that, right? Hasn't she? Well, that's one that? option. Well, that's, that is a logical, to me, that's a, to me, that's a pretty good logical option because uh, there we're not talking about spending money we don't have. We have that money eventually. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so here, forecasting a revenue shortfall of X dollars because of uh, property taxes that aren't paid or paid in time, then to me it makes sense to borrow against that because you're going to be able to pay that off over you know, as, as the taxes come in. So that requires an actual real estate market. That requires somebody to actually buy a house rather than simply accruing liens on it. You know, year by year, we add another, you know, $6,000 in liens on the house. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, be pessimistic here and conservative in my thinking. So well, that, that, I'm, is, that seems extremely pessimistic. Yeah. In my mind, look, we've had two months. We're going to have three to four months of uh, this is stuff. And Phil, you should, you should realize this. We're not going to get this back. We're not going to make up for the revenues that are, you'll make up for some, but it's not like we're going to have a major party and everything's going to go and spend the way it was. The state is going to be short. It's, uh, this is not going to be a fun time. However, um, you know, if a house has $5,000 due and the tax weren't paid, I, I, you know, the real estate market is not going to collapse to nothing. Um, at least I, if it does, we're going to have much bigger problems. Let's put it that way. So I, I, I I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, that's it. I don't want to talk about. I don't want to spend any more time talking about it. But if push came to shove, and I'm reacting to Phil wanting to to like you know top to cut twenty percent or ten percent, whatever it is. Of course, I don't think Phil is referring to the schools. I think he's talk, referring to the to the government. No, I, I, and I'm also cognizant. Uh, hang on, I'm also cognizant, and I agree, Tom. 
you know, you said you're never going to do this. And I think, you know, of uh, trying to, uh, uh, you know, trying to, to um, try, uh, trying to borrow uh, or, or tax against, you know, the shortfall in, in operations for government. And to me, again, I have no idea what the shortfall is going to be or where it's going to come from. It's possible it's more likely going to come from just people buying less cars or whatever it is. And then that's a different story. Right, we, we, we don't have a lot of fat in our budget, okay? If we cut our budget 20%, we'd be cutting essential services. I, I, I agree. Essential services totally in place. Agree. Yes, that's, that's the way to do this is the way that Tom is suggesting. And so, yeah. so I, I never suggested cutting anything 20%. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that what, if, if we are in the position where there is a revenue deficit and we, that, that it should not be automatically backfilled, that some or all of it should be looked at. It doesn't have to be all of it, but you, you have to take a look at spending again before you just shovel taxpayer dollars into to, to, to backfill it. That, and, and that if it's an emergency for it, you know, if it's an emergency, it's an emergency for everybody. And that includes the schools. And, you know, we don't know how bad this is going to be, but this, the schools are, are fleshing out real disaster, double digit budget loss scenarios. And, you know, because they have to, that's, that's being responsible and planning. And, you know, we should be talking about that too, from the point of view of, you know, some, some things you can't, <laughs> Sometimes you're going to have to make cuts. But we we have but the we money have to right now not to make cuts. What's that? Yeah. We have the money in 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 stabilization and free cash where we don't have to make those cuts, but we can put a reserve in place in case we are short on revenue. We can't pass a budget that's not balanced. Right. And we're expecting a revenue shortfall. Now, maybe the revenue shortfall is half what I've predicted. That's fine. Make that the assumption. Take 80000 from each. But, and, and we don't have to spend it. And there's always the possibility of cutting rather than spending. All town meeting does is authorize a certain amount. We don't even have to take it back to town meeting to cut it. That's a policy decision. So, Tom, if if we have to cut... Are you saying we need to take this money out of general stabilization or and free cash now, and we can't wait and do it later if the revenue is a lot less than we expect? If we expect the revenue to be lower, we should not present an expense side of the budget that is higher than the revenue side. So part of this is a discussion about is that three hundred and eighteen thousand dollars a realistic figure i put it out there and said if it is this is the result and here is the way we can deal with it um here is a way that we can deal with it i i like the idea of you know once once the november tax bills come in we 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 see where where the problems are we see how much you know we've lost and then we decide how to deal with it then and some of it can be backfilling of it backfilling and some of it can be cutting depending on how much the damage is but we can't wait until then to make this decision we should not pass a budget that is not balanced <laughs> but it but i mean you know and then the, all of these numbers are based on sort of your your extrapolation from what happened in 2009 and it's a terrible you know, set of data. Nothing else yes. to go on here, Phil. Yes. It's a horrible situation. We don't, we don't have a lot this of information to go on here. So the best information we have is what the last contraction was. That's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a lot of unknowns. I'm comfortable with taking it out of free cash. I'm less comfortable taking it out of stabilization. Well, we need a certain amount of money, and, and maybe my assumption is too conservative. So there's two parts of it. What, how much do we need to, to consider, and then where does it come from? Well, hey, Tom, Alan here. I have a question. So if we were to take that out of stabilization, 
Could you come up with a scenario of how, uh, like, how it would be replenished? I mean, I, I mean, otherwise, you're looking for a two-thirds vote at town meeting. I can say probably it won't happen. Yeah, the economy rebounds and everything is roses. Well, I mean, how we get lots of it for a number of years it's, and, and look at it from the standpoint of what are our future needs, fiscal year 22. That's well, you know, one of my well, greatest if concerns. We, uh, let's just, just take a hard let's just deal with 21 right now. The following right. year. No, I mean, what, Alan, your question sort of augurs to the importance of keeping free cash for next year and the school is looking at a similar thing it's not free cash it's E&D but you know the disaster you budget years are when you need that stuff um, and you know I, I, if this is the discussion that this is the amount that you want to set aside to pay for a deficit then the budget is too big and we need to make more cuts we don't have a lot of well a lot of fat in the budget Philip it's it's the deficit that might be too big. Maybe it's only one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. Maybe it's half of that three hundred and eighteen. And then if we cut five percent, that's forty seven thousand dollars off. You'll see I highlighted the five, ten, fifteen and twenty percent cuts here. So that leaves us only ninety two thousand in deficit. We can do that through free cash. My like recommendation would be, much. my recommendation would be to assume worse damage and not have to spend the money to make it up, rather than assume too little damage and have to go back and make cuts further on, the way Darius was saying earlier. Right, and that, and, and in that case, it's because of the institutional impossibility of instituting cuts midstream, and. Um, how that that's uh, uh, guaranteeing a set of grievances and appeals into court systems that the school would not prevail in. Um, so that, there's that. Well, if it doesn't have the money, if it doesn't have the money, that is a proper and legal reason for cutting um, negotiated salaries. Um, only once there's data that says that, you know what I mean? We're not there. We don't have the data. So we will be, <laughs> we will be there. But, I mean, that's, that's you know? the, thing. Like, the, the, the impossibility of the school making these decisions without the data is going on at the same time as our impossibility of making good decisions because we have no data. And oh, Philip, we're not going to, we, we're not going to have any data. Right. before the end of the fiscal year. The state is not going to have a budget before the end of the fiscal year. Right. Flying blind here, we have to do the best we can. And um, I'm not comfortable just pre-authorizing deficit spending when uh, the, when without taking a look at uh, um, the actual spending itself instead of just paying the bill. Oh, the 10... 15 and 20 percent cuts are up there on the screen and you know it's true the the figure i came up with uh is a is a worst case scenario and i don't know if it's going to be a worst case scenario uh these are policy decisions that the board and the finance committee are going to have to make and tonight this is a great discussion because we're getting the issues out on the table so maybe it's too, maybe 318,000 is too much. I just gave you a scenario where, well, you cut that in half and you make a 5% cut and all of a sudden, all you need is, is $92,000 to make up the budget. That's not nearly as scary. So you set that aside in case you need it. You know, even, even without the cut, it's $159,000, so you take $80,000 from free cash and general stabilization, half the amount as a backstop. And no, you don't spend it unless you need it. It's, an, it's, it's insurance. It's a reserve. And authorizing it does not mean that it gets spent. It only gets spent 
if revenues come in and we have a problem. But we need to pass a balanced budget. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. The numbers are a policy, policy decision that nobody is well equipped to come up with a, a good answer. I've given the worst case scenario and I've given, okay, maybe half that. But at some point, people are going to need to make that decision. And it influences how the warrant is written because it's going to influence Article 2 if people want to cut something. I'm saying we don't have to, um, but, you know, it all depends on, on, uh, on whether people pay their property taxes next year. Business approach. And I think the worst case is what we have to plan for right now. And again, it's just planning. It's just putting money in place that doesn't have to be spent if that estimate is too high. Were you waiting for me to say something? No, I'm not waiting for you to say anything. Okay. Well, my thought is, Tom, uh, if you could, you know, if you can redo the uh, Article 2 and warrants, you know, including the uh, debt service with the uh, Greenfield Cooperative Bank loan for the highway, these other scenarios here that you've uh, put in, and you can take a look at it. Do you, you want to convene again jointly uh, next Monday, the following Monday? What, what's your, what do you want to do, Tom? Yeah, Not until we have a warrant. Next Monday, absolutely. Okay, all right. We've got to make a decision on this probably next Monday, right, Tom? Uh, that that would be very helpful. There, there's there's maybe another week after that, but um, well, yeah, yeah. There there is another week after that, but that really should be fine tuning. Uh, the, the basic principles of how we're going to proceed, I think, have to be agreed to next week. Okay. Yeah. Good. Right, is everybody happy with that? <laughs> sure. Okay. Awesome. Next item on the agenda, Thomas. Any any items not anticipated? Uh, no. Does uh, Does Lori want us to make a vote about the thirtieth? Oh yes, I'm terribly sorry. That was unanticipated. Okay. Um, yes. You want to uh, and that? and. Uh, yeah, she has a, a timeline for her elections that includes um, the, uh, it, this is basically authorizing the election warrant, um, which states when and where the election is going to be held. And, and she, she needs the vote now. Uh, I'm not sure she needs the warrant now, but she needs the vote tonight. Um, and uh, we will for the date. Yes, we need okay. to set the date. And the date she June wants 30th. is the 30th. All right. Yes. I'll make, motion, I'll make a motion that we um, set the town elections for June 30th. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Hello. Yes. Robert? Yeah. And myself. Okay, we're good for June 30th. Thank you, John. Okay. Thomas, you have an update. Uh, yes. Um, uh, the newsletter committee uh, continues to refine its operations. We've sorted out invoicing issues with them. Uh, one member had fronted a considerable amount of money, and we had to take a step back to make sure the paperwork for reimbursement was in order. And uh, it is now, and everything should be in order from now on. Uh, we may, they, there's been a request for a, uh, a color printer so that the covers can be continued to be printed in color. Uh, it's very dis difficult to reimburse somebody for their personal use of personal equipment. Uh, and that seemed to be the best compromise, but I'm working on that with Roy now. Um, and the newsletter committee. 
Uh, I believe we have enough money in the IT budget to cover that. Okay. Uh, in departmental news, the excavation for the highway maintenance facility is completed and the forms for the footings are expected to be set up this week. The four foot foundations will be formed and poured over the next several weeks. And finally, the slab uh, before the frame starts to go up in about a month. The treasurer collector reports that she has only gotten two calls from residents requesting payment plans for their taxes, which she is developing. This is right. good news in relation right. to possible revenue shortfalls in FY 2020, but probably too little information to guide decisions regarding FY 21. Mm -hmm. uh, she has received just 81% of expected revenue instead of the usual 93 to 94%, but the deadline has been extended, so we don't know what that 81% figure represents, although I thought I would report it to you. That's great. Yeah, I, we're, we're looking good there, I think. Yeah. The uh, current forest stewardship grant is probably not able to be postponed. A different grant focused on South River activity, which is an MVP grant, uh, which is able to be extended, uh, but not the forest stewardship grant, so the initial rather narrow time frame holds. And I think we all understand now that the governor will announce a reopening plan on May 18th. We got a little teaser of that today with his press release. Um, and uh, I understand it'll look something like Rhode Island's, uh, but I have not looked at Rhode Island's plan yet. And that's it for me. Great. Thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom? All right. Thank you, Tom. Concerns of the selectmen. Robert, you have anything? No. Uh, I did have one thing real short, but it was that there are a bunch of people in town trying to find a drop-off spot for people that order through Instacart uh, in Conway. You can order food through Instacart and but they won't deliver it except to the center of town and so phil went down and talked to the conway inn and barb has said her porch would be a great place to do that and so pixie holbrook is writing a note to go into the next conway currents so i'm just saying this for anybody that is were is would like to use instacart as a way to order from many of the stores in greenfield and they will deliver to conway and, and you can read about it in the Conway Currents. So that's not exactly a concern, but it is a concern for people that don't want to go into stores. Right. Okay, great. Philip, you have anything? So, yeah, um, I've been requested to um, re the, read a letter that I just got from a Conway resident and nurse named Samantha Fabian. Oh, that she wrote a note to the recorder? Yeah. Um, and so she wanted to make sure that the select board heard this, especially um, <coughs> as regards to the discussion from last week. Um, so Go ahead, Philip. So I am a nurse caring for patients with COVID-19. My unit was turned into a COVID-19 dedicated unit when the storm raged in. I am also a mother to two babies. I sit in the parking lot before my shift and I cry. I wear my feelings... <laughs> I write my feelings down as an outlet and therapeutic tool. I need people to hear me. I want to scream at the top of my lungs for people to understand how hurtful it is to watch people not social distance while I sit with my patient as she cries and struggles to breathe after she watched her husband succumb to COVID-19 and now it is her turn to fight. I want to pray. I want to cry. I want to do anything I can to make this better. What I do is I go into work and I care for patients. I nurse the hardest and bravest I ever have in my life. I also need people to know I suffocate. I have to wear a tight fitting mask that I cannot remove for hours at a time. Sometimes we are only allowed one. And now our mask will be sent off to be decontaminated, they tell us. They will be sprayed with chemicals and given back to wear over and over. We used to throw these masks out after we left each patient's room. Every single time I feel like we are being poisoned by our own carbon dioxide, by our own PPE. Yet I feel lucky enough to even have something to protect me. I feel betrayed, how can this be real? How can we be doing God's work, the most noble profession, but be treated this way? 
I make the choice to leave my family and be a nurse, to be brave for the ones who need me. I will save a life and sadly, I will comfort as a life is lost. I am fiercely committed to my patients as all nurses are. That is why we are putting our health on the line, but we are worth more. Our lives and our safety are worth more than this. Please stand by us. Please help us by doing your part and staying home and hear us. We are suffocating from a sad nurse from Conway, Samantha Fabian. Wow, that's a powerful letter. Yeah. He printed that in the recorder a few days ago. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah our, our frontline healthcare workers are just, just doing a tremendous job at their own, at the risk of their own health. We don't realize basically what my daughter in Boston, right who's a nurse, tells me every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, Philip, for that. Um, okay, any announcements? I don't have any announcements. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for... Yeah, actually, John, I have a couple announcements about me. Go ahead, Philip. So, um... one second. So this week, um, tomorrow is the, uh, a Frontier Regional Committee where the budget will be discussed at four o'clock. Um, you're all welcome to, to dial in and be part of that. The, um, Can you send that information yeah, out? Yeah, could the you dial send in? that information to us? Yeah. Yeah, I will. Um, and, and you know, I, I think it's fine. You know, I, I'm 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 okay, John, with you know, with the chairman and town coordinators forming like a shadow school committee and trying to talk to to to, to, to Darius and all that. That's fine. Uh, honestly, that's that's good. I think the more time you all spend with Darius, the better it is for everybody. Um, but the, when when you're doing that next meeting, the 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 problem is that that the Frontier Budget Committee when we meet. It, like I, I know sort of what's going on in, in our town, but the other three towns had people that represent them in the budget committee and who are responsible for putting the budget together that had no idea what their town's issues were. All three, the, and that, you know, it, when, when we're trying to work, the frontier is trying, the budget committee is trying to work out the budget and Darius is having to explain to town residents what their town select board's positions are, then that's not a recipe for like getting everybody together. So, you know, it, it's not so much you, it's sort of, it's the other three towns that really need to step up their integration with their school committee representative because Darius doesn't put the budget together. He makes recommendations and that committee does. And that committee has to know what this, their own select board is, is talking about. Like I, I don't have any problem with it because I know what 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 are what we talking about. So, but the other the other three, it's it that that was a big deal because, um, yeah, uh, I I was shocked that 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 those that, that the representatives from those towns just had no idea about the various requests, all those letters from select boards, all that they just didn't know. We got to do better than that. But you and our town, we were fine. It's the other three. Yeah, and, and it, yeah, we we just had the, that meeting just just to get a sense of where everybody is. Yeah, I, 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 I encourage you to reach out to Darius and on all that. Just always remember that every week he gets calls from headhunters. He can double his money by driving an hour each way. And he's the fifth lowest superintendent, paid superintendent in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And we just want to, we want him to stay. We don't want to exhaust him. Right. I tell that to everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. But All right. that's it. Anything, anything else? No? Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for the 18th. That's next Monday via Zoom meeting. Um, if there's no more business to come before the board. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yeah. Philip seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Philip, aye. aye. Okay.